Hi, Mark, you're muted. Mark, you're on mute. Oh. <laughs> hey, guys, sorry about that. Welcome to our uh, presentation with Couple of Fern and Florida Native Plant Society. I have, uh, I'm just so excited. I have the Couple of Fern team here. We have Susan Early here from the Native Gardening Group. We have Bonnie Basham here, who is our FNPS state president. So uh, a rare treat for us to have Bonnie with us. So um, please welcome our wonderful panel um, as we try to kick off October Native Plant Month a few days early. <laughs> it's still September, but happy October Florida Native Plant Month in advance. And uh, this is an exclusive presentation just for the Florida Native Gardening Group. Uh, in case you guys are also on our YouTube channel at Couple of Fern or Florida Native Plant Society, this is being streamed there as well. So uh, I would uh, like you all to uh, just uh, lend your ears to Bonnie. Um, Bonnie, if you could introduce yourself, say hello and a few words. Uh, to the viewership, that'd be great. Certainly, um, and thank you so much for inviting me. Um, uh, my chapter is up here in North Florida. It's the Saracenia chapter. Um, and we were out yesterday in the field doing a, a hike, looking at um, some of the Florida sinkholes that um, are active in our woods. Um, my background is, um, well, I was taught, I didn't realize it, but I was taught the native uh, botanical names of plants as early as eight when my grandmother started me weeding and working in her garden with her. And it wasn't until much later that I realized I, I knew what those plants were in native Turk, but I didn't know what the common names were. So that was a bit of a, a bit of a switch for me. Um, and um, in terms of my background, I have two master's degrees from Stetson, one in education and one in political science. And I am a lobbyist for the boat owners of the United States, Boat US in the Florida capital, and have been a lobbyist for 40 years. So, um, and I've been thrilled with my opportunity to serve the native plant community as, as your president. Oh, wonderful. Uh, Bonnie, it's, it's a great honor to have you here. And thank you so much for spending a little bit of your Sunday with us. Um, would you like to uh, talk a little bit about your Native Plant Month proclamation experience here? Uh, with Commissioner uh, Nikki Freed. I'm sorry, uh, it, she's the Agricultural Commissioner. Yes, she is. Okay, yes, with Nikki Freed, please. Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, Florida Native Plant Society encourages all of its chapters to work with the local city or county commission and have October named the, uh, for the Native Plant, Florida Native Plant Month. Um, and Commissioner Freed um, was sponsored the proclamation and the entire governor and cabinet signed it. You can't see it very well, but um, it talks about how important natives are to our, our everyday lives, um, how important pollinators are, uh, and, and proclaims that, that October is Native Plant Month in large part because it is the month um, during which most of our plants bloom. Um, so we're, we're very happy to, to have that act proclamation from uh, Nikki and from the uh, governor and cabinet, and we'll be doing that again this year as well. That's wonderful. Folks, we have a short clip uh, with Commissioner uh, of agriculture, Nicole Nikki Freed here. So we're going to play it for you all. Um, but it was a it was a great moment in time. Uh, before this, uh, the 33 chapters across the state led their own independent native plan proclamations, and Bonnie uh, 
when she first became president uh, a few years back, she had the great honor of uh, seeing this uh, county level proclamation initiative being elevated to a statewide uh, proclamation. So uh, listen in to what Nicole, uh, Nikki Fried has to say here, that'd be, that'd be good. Are the heart of our ecosystem, nourishment for wildlife and shelter from severe storms and summer heat. These also rely on the native plants survive to pollinate citrus and crops. Incredibly diverse, over 3,000 plant species key to conservation. Native plants' natural resistance to pests, insects, pathogens make ideal for creating resilience. I think we lost the audio on the video. Therefore, proclaim October as Native Plant Month in Florida and have a proclamation. So whereas Florida native plants serve as a very the very foundation of wildlife habitats, and whereas native plants are a natural environment for bees, butterflies, and other pollinators provide habitats for many non-insect animals. And whereas Florida has two world-renowned hotspots for plant biodiversity, the Lake Wales region of Central Florida and the Lapalachicola River Valley. And whereas more than 3,000 native plant species inhabit Florida, and at least 250 species are endemic to Florida, they do not occur anywhere else in the world. And whereas in 2015, native plants encountered, uh, accounted for 170 million in nursery sales and generated an expanded economic impact of 1.2 billion to the state. And whereas the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services has designated more than 550 native plant species as endangered, threatened, or commercially exploited, thus underscoring the need for greater public recognition and protection. And whereas native plants impart natural grace and beauty to develop landscapes that are naturally adapted to Florida's climate and rainfall patterns more than just native plants. And whereas October is an especially vibrant month to see native plants in bloom, and provide opportunities for the public to appreciate the beauty and natural value of native plants. Whereas the preservation of Florida's native plants is an essential prerequisite to the conservation of our natural wildlife for generations to come. Now therefore be it resolved, the Governor Cabinet of the State of Florida hereby recognize October 29th as Florida's Native Plant Month. Be it further resolved, the Governor and Cabinet of the State of Florida acknowledge the benefit of preserving our natural plants and support public awareness of the same testimony there before the cabinet and uh, the governor. So I'm going to present that to you. you. So the other people that we have here, <laughs> the other people that we have here is, uh, is Donna Laguerre and Jody Wongo, the owners of Native Nurseries. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm just going to tell everybody who's here. Um, and Jen Juliet Rayner, Executive Director of Florida Native Plant Society. And then of course, Bonnie Basham and Sue Mullins of the Native, of Florida Native yeah, that was great, guys. I, I mean, when that happened, I was blown away uh, because for years we we did this as a chapter-led initiative, and we would ask our fellow chapters, "Hey, are you doing a Native Plant Month proclamation this year? Uh, are you doing one?" Um, so, you know, when it was actually just statewide, and I was like, "Wow," you know, the uh, Native Plant message is not only being recognized, but it's being valued. And uh, uh, Nikki actually came out and gave some of her time with us. So it was really, really special. Um, Bonnie, would you like to add something to that experience since you were there? Well, only that, yeah, you're absolutely right. It, it felt really super to have the governor and cabinet recognize um, the 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 Florida Native Plant Society and Florida Native Plants. Each one of them signed that. The I've got the proclamation framed, um, and, and which means that they read it and that they thought it through and that they agreed with it. And and that has taken us to an enormously high level. And, and I'm really proud to have been a part of it. Special indeed. Thank you, Bonnie. So who we are as Florida Native Plant 
and society. So we are a rather uh, well-founded or we entered the game of native plants very early on. It was founded in 1980. Uh, it has a long history of highlighting native plants. Uh, there are currently 5,000 plus members statewide. Uh, and this is actually another nod to the native gardening group. When you guys actually did your, uh, your, you know, your independent drive on how to uh, support uh, a nonprofit like the Native Plant Society here in Florida, uh, we, we saw tangible traction in our uh, membership growth in just a few short weeks. Uh, matter of fact, the executive director and admin services um, uh, attribute close to 200 members uh, within that short period of time that the Native Gardening Group promoted a Native Plant Society. So uh, part of the reason why we're 5,000 members strong is because of people like you. Um, so we are a known organization within the Native Plant World. Uh, another large and robust uh, native plant society is the california native plant society um, but all our social media just like native gardening group does uh, they track their metrics our metrics for florida native plant society is uh stronger at, at times than the california native plant society so uh, we are right on track with becoming um, something uh, to be contended with i guess um, Cup of Fern, we are a chapter of the Native Plant Society. We directly serve the North Orlando suburbs. So in case you are in Seminole County, West Volusia, uh, or the nearby areas that, you know, your drive time is quicker to our location in Sanford, uh, that's our direct service region to you. Uh, we do have members from all over the state. We do have a few members that are out of state, um, but we always recommend that in case you are um, wanting to make a difference uh, in your local level, in your locale, uh, please choose a chapter. There are 33 chapters across the state. So choose a chapter uh, local to your region so you can get involved with them and make a difference for your local environment. Um, our eventful chapter, uh, we focus on a diverse uh, activity-based learning. So I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later on, but we, uh, we are known for our events and uh, we try to think outside the box with them for sure. Um, but here are some core uh, points for the Native Plant Society, preservation, conservation, restoration. That's actually part of our mission, which is the preservation, conservation, and restoration of native plants and native plant communities. But did you know that we actually are involved in research? Uh, did you know that we're involved in policy? Uh, I'm sure you guys know a lot about our educational outreach, uh, but do you know about our landscape awards? So in case uh, we have, uh, you guys have gardeners in your Florida Native Gardening Group that are all Native, 100% Native, you can actually apply for a landscape award. Uh, and we also do a lot of citizen science. Uh, we are a volunteer-driven organization. 98% uh, of what we put out into the community is volunteer driven. So that's pretty amazing uh, for a nonprofit like ours. Uh, Susan, I wanted to ask you, is there any uh, of these points that you feel the Native Gardening Group would like to explore? What would we like to explore? Um, I think maybe the uh, education that's available because uh, when I first became involved in the group and in excuse me, really improving my native yard. I, uh, I was really grateful for all the um, re educational programs that you all presented. Wonderful, let's check out education. So it's gonna pull up on a separate tab. So I love the headline here, ending plant blindness. Yes, it's not just a wall of green. So in case you're a native plant enthusiast or a native plant society member, you can actually tell the details or maybe even the story of the land. There are invasive plants out there or if it's a fire uh, suppressed region. Um, so Native Plant Society and uh, Native gardening enthusiasts in general uh, are on a common mission to end plant blindness. So they, we do monthly programs. Every chapter participates in some sort of monthly experience. 
there is the annual conference. I don't know if uh, you guys know this, but uh, we have, uh, you know, an annual conference in May. Uh, it will be our 41st annual conference this year. Uh, I'm sorry, next year. And uh, we'll be doing it in a dual format, uh, part of it virtual and part of it in person. Field trips. So talk about social learning. Uh, I know Kaylee is going to talk a little bit more about plant communities and how to pair plants, uh, you know, and take inspiration from how you find them in uh, natural areas. But field trips are a great way to study plants in their uh, natural environment and see how they pair with one another. So field trips are an important uh, part of every chapter of the Florida Native Plant Society and public outreach. So we do a lot of outreach online. We have the FNPS blog. I'm gonna click that for you guys. So there was a little uh, mention about Jim Thomas, uh, who did a lot of work out at Oakland Nature Preserve in West Orange County. Uh, some updates on the legislative uh, season for 2021. Moth Week, so in case you guys are pollinator uh, people, so we had a week-long rollout for the 10th annual National Moth Week. And this was championed by a um, uh, member at large by the name of Laura Bennett Kimball. So she actually does a week-long uh, photo series with uh, Florida Native Plant Society State on pollinators, and she focuses on moths. And publications. So speaking of publications, I actually have the Native Landscape brochure. It's right here. Do you guys see it? There you go. Yeah, so we'll be gifting these away to some lucky participants uh, while they play a free online game with us um, just to kind of, you know, uh, make this a little more interactive. Is that the one that has the um, different uh, sun exposure needs and the different water needs kind of combined? That's right. That's right. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to uh, go back to this and show you what it looks like. So, yeah. It's got it's really helpful. Yeah. Am I holding it right? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Sun, shade. Um, but yeah, this one is for the Central Florida region. We have a whole bunch of them to give away. Uh, any lucky participant that gets the right answer, please PM private message couple of firm with your address, and we'll be happy to put this in the mail uh, and send it your way. So, all right, uh, let's move on with some other stuff. So, yeah, so citizen science is the bulk of uh, our volunteerism uh, as well as education. But in case you guys are interested in the landscape uh, aspect of it, here it is for you guys to peruse through landscape awards. So what uh, type of categories are there for the landscape awards? Residential yards. So many of you participate in residential transformation. So there's an award for that. Um, in case you guys are doing some sort of uh, roadside uh, installation, I know that Pine Lily chapter, um, her, their president, Karina, is uh, interacting with a nursery out in Lake County for a roadside landscape demonstration uh, garden. So there's an award for that. Commercial landscaping, businesses that employ native plants in their landscaping. There's an award for that. Restoration areas, butterfly gardens. So there is an award for every category that you can think of and please apply. Uh, you know, we want to make sure that you guys get the recognition and the acknowledgement. And when you click on each of these categories, it'll actually give you some detailed information on uh, what the criteria of each of the uh, award uh, subcategories are for. And couple firms. So Kaylee, Jonathan, Stephen, uh, would you like to talk a little bit about your experiences when I say think outside the box? Uh, 
and uh, and how we approach our outreach. Sure. Um, I uh, have been with Couplet Fern for about a year and a half now, and um, I came up came upon it because uh, Mark, you reached out um, due to me being so involved with the Florida Native Gardening Group, and. Um, I think I had asked a question or something and you reached out and we're like, we would love for you to join the team. So we worked together on doing that. And uh, I've since then been a part of doing plant sales, um, uh, floristic inventories. We would go and visit a private preserve to um, check out the, the plants that are existing there and how we can help the landowner res restore and protect his property. Um, and being with Couplet Fern has given me new skills with like working with this online webinar uh, format and giving presentations and in general and networking has been a really, really big thing. I've met so many really good and like-minded people and, and helpful individuals with my journey of learning native plants more. Thank you. Stephen, you're a newcomer. So you come from a, a, a totally different world. Uh, and then you somehow uh, became a Native Plant Society member. Do you want to share a little bit of your uh, experience so far? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, thank you, Mark. Um, really, I was trying to find more information. Um, my yard is, you know, it is what it is when I bought the house 10 years ago. And, you know, I'm in a scrub habitat. I've gone to La Union Preserve um, and got introduced to the concept of natives and kind of supporting you know, the habitat and, you know, birds and insects and so forth. So uh, that sort of led me down a YouTube rabbit hole, as it were. And then I happened upon a uh, couple of fern. And to Kelly's point, it's been fantastic. Uh, the resources and just being able to come ask questions, um, being connected to other people who can uh, kind of support my journey and, and provide more insight and learning resources and give me the confidence, honestly, to just start, you know, digging and planting things and seeing kind of how it goes. So, yeah, it's been, it's been fantastic. We are very happy to have you, and we are uh, honored to be part of the uh, start of your journey with native plants. And Stephen, you've been, you've been great. I mean, uh, you know, whenever we see that aha moment when a native plant, you know, you're like, wow, I, I really like it, and I, I really want to see if I can grow this in my yard. Every time we see that aha moment, uh, it just makes it so much more sweeter. So, thanks for being part of us. Of course, thank you. John, t uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're a you're you're a gardening geek. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm relatively new to it though, so um, my journey is kind of like Stevens. Um, I really only got into native plants about two years ago um, after I read uh, some books by a person. I, hopefully, most people know. If not, uh, you should definitely look him up. Uh, his name is Dr. Doug Tallamy, um, and he basically introduces you know the concept of native plants as you know a way everyone can actually help the environment because um there's now more than ever um a lot more development going on um and private landowners actually own a pretty sizable chunk of uh the country especially in certain places and one thing you can really do to support biodiversity and um native plants and animals is you know to take your little bit of yard and plant native so that's kind of how I got pulled in. Um, things really picked up right before COVID. Um, I actually started uh, doing a lot more landscaping. And then as COVID hit and uh, people were staying in more, um, I really discovered some of uh, Couplet Fern's um, YouTube videos on, you know, doing rain gardens or, you know, um, planting with South Florida plants, a lot of different things. And uh, after Mark had seen me for a while, um, he pulled me in as a uh, board member. Yeah, I seem to have that habit, don't I? I yeah. need to. I need to, <laughs> I need to check that. <laughs> Susan, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you are uh, good friends with Kaylee, Gia, Kim, uh, Jeffrey, Bippert. Uh, you guys are kind of spaced all over the state, which is really cool. But how did you um, start off, and how did you get um, attracted to native plants? I think you're muted, Susan. 
Oh, Susan, you're muted, by the way. <laughs> Try it. I did that for my dogs. <laughs> Um, anyway, I, I started because there was a, um, a large, one of the large sulfurs kept flying by my windows. And I, I don't know that just, it reminded me of my childhood and I wanted to have Florida like it was, and I'm kind of old. So, so it's been a long time. I mean, we used to catch butterflies all the time and there are plenty of them. So, uh, I started uh, looking on, on, uh, Facebook groups and I came across, uh, the native wildflower group. And started reading some of the books by Roger Hammer and Craig Hegel. And I, I just really got committed to it. And it, and, it, and it sucks you in. Once you start attracting something that you really like, it sucks you in and you listen to other people. And like Jonathan, when the pandemic started, I started listening to your, uh, your um, online programs. And, uh, you know, those encouraged me a little bit more. And then Gia started the... Um, the group, the Florida Native Gardening Group. And I'm so I met Kaylee and um, Gia when we went down to, I don't know, uh, in the Sarasota area and uh, helped some people pull out some invasive plants from their yards. And I just kept volunteering. And eventually they just had to have me, you know? <laughs> I sort of pushed my way into that little group, but it's been the most, really been the most educational part of my journey. And I've been doing this maybe for five years now. It's, it's been remarkable, remarkable. Like your membership stands right at the precipice of 10,000 members now. Isn't that incredible? That is, that really shows that native plants are being adopted and they're being, uh, taken seriously uh, the message of conservation and the plant pollinator partnership is being taken seriously. Um, and just the, the community that you guys have uh, nurtured, you, should, you guys should be really proud of yourselves. I mean, I, sometimes I, I see a post and they, they want help and you see a comment in the post saying, I, I'm, I'm not too far away, I can come and help you. Yeah. Or uh, I, I have some plants that you, I can share with you. And it's, it's just been great to see that level of interest, passion, and uh, people discovering the joy of native plants. It's amazing. And, and it's, you really feel a community with this group, uh, which, is, which is something that it's hard to develop when you're isolated at home. So mm -hmm. it's really, it really happened at almost a perfect time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So guys, you probably are wondering what the cup of fern looks like. Let me show you a picture of it. I pulled it up somewhere. There it is. That's how big the cup of fern is. Just so you guys are aware. It's, it's not Wait. a small little demure plant by any measure. Oh, wait a minute. There we go. <laughs> I had to switch back to my screen. There we go. Yeah, so that's Nita. Uh, she's a longtime uh, Native Plant Society member. She serves uh, Lake Beauty Berry chapter. She serves a couple of firm from time to time as well. Um, but there she is, and you can't see uh, what she's doing, but she has a little plant microscope, and she is uh, inspecting what makes that fern, the couplet fern. So it's a rather large, sprawling fern, um, and uh, it's found uh, locally in Seminole County. Uh, I believe it has been uh, locally extinct in Brevard and in South Florida. It just occurs naturally in uh, just a very few select counties here in Florida. Um, but uh, uh, Fairchild Tropical down in South Florida is trying to rehabilitate their uh, natural population of couple of farm. Um, but it requires very specific uh, growing and uh, geologic needs. It needs to be in what they call a, uh, uh, a spring run swamp. Uh, or floodplain. Um, so you can have as many spores of this plant. I know some of you guys are seed collectors or spore collectors or 
clipping, clipping queens, plant, cl uh, plant clippings. Um, but this particular plant, uh, the reason why it is so rare is because it needs, it's like a Goldilocks plant. It doesn't require too hot, doesn't require too cold. It has to have just the right uh, circumstances for it to, uh, to sprout. So that's what the fiddlehead looks like. And uh, let me show you a close up of the, uh, the couplet part. So that's one of its little leaflets. And the sori are positioned right at the uh, leaflet's edge in a cup or a small uh, cigarette butt type shape. So that's what oh gives this fern the couplet fern name. Just so you guys are aware. Um, let me just highlight that uh, many of us, even myself included, who have been doing this a few years, still don't know uh, plant biological names or parts of plant names very well, but going on field trips is a, a good way to learn words like that, sori and things like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So is that where the spores are? Those are the spores, yes. Yes, exactly. That was very so, interesting. Mm -hmm. So uh, Kaylee, uh, let's go back to the Native Gardening Group. Uh, tell us a little bit more about it. Um, okay, so Gia started it in um, 2019. Um, uh, she sent me a video earlier and I kind of transcribed a little bit of what she said. And, and uh, so I think I'll read that off here. So she created the group um, because she has a passion for nature and uh, for gardening already. And then she learned that people intentionally garden with native plants. And so she just thought that that would bring things together for her and, and uh, brought her two passions together, as she said. And uh, it brought her to caring more about conservation and citizen science, uh, environmental science and things like that. So bringing it to a social learning group um, where we could meet other like-minded people and, um, well, interact with, and not necessarily meet, but we did end up meeting a lot of people. And we um, started doing some events, like Susan mentioned, as we, um, it was pre-COVID and we wanted to help people out with their um, invasive plant removal. So we ran a thing uh, uh, to uh, get some people. We had two, two properties that we um, went to over in the Sarasota area. And um, so G and I drove all the way from Seminole County over there, but, um, and it was great. And um, that was a, a really good experience to, to get to know each other. And we started, um, having more engagement with the group and, and the group is a little bit different than it was when it started out in that we um, we've altered a few rules here and there to allow for like, uh, uh, you know, memes, you know, we try not to uh, let memes overtake the feed, but we didn't want them in the first place at first, but now we allow it. Um, so we just, we, um, we try to keep it specifically to native plants. Um, so that people that are new to the group or that are new to native plants in general uh, don't get so easily confused of seeing a post and thinking, oh, it's in the native gardening group. It must be a native. So we'll um, manage those and do that. And um, we uh, field questions, all that we, we answer questions and, and have people um, share pictures of what they've done in their yards to help inspire other people. And it's it's been a really, really, exciting way to, to share. And as Susan also said, is like have a community of people that we can benefit from and, and, and help out and learn from. And, and there's a lot of things, there's a lot of things that, that individuals know, but as a group, we don't know them all. And so mm -hmm. it's great to share that knowledge too. We have people that are just bought their first native plant or even yeah. don't even have any native plants yet. And then we have, um, people like Dr. Hugel or Rufino Osorio, or um, we, we have so many experts in the group as well. Um, people that are already in Florida Native Plant Society. And then we have people that are not in Florida Native Plant Society that are still trying to decide if they want to commit, you know, it's it's um, to a membership. And it, it it isn't that expensive, honestly. And, and so and it opens up so many doors to people to 
learn and have new experiences like the field trips you get to go on and and go to different places and it's it's been very good to couple the two together of the the social learning group and and Kaylee, Kaylee, you know, yeah. it's it's almost incredible how much money you can save if you have a membership in the Florida Native Plant Society. And I know, that's, I know it's kind of crazy, but when I buy plants, and I've bought a lot of them in the last couple of years, um, that 10% off that the Native nurseries give you is just like an incredible savings when you put it all together, more than pays for the membership in the Florida Native Plant Society. Mm -hmm. I agree. It definitely, it, it just, it is so worth it. It's um, so we try to encourage people and be like, Hey, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely something you want to do if you want to continue pursuing native gardening. And we always want to encourage people to leave. We don't want to ever make people feel, you know, like they're not welcome because they don't already know. So it's, we take the approach of it's okay to learn with us and then go from there and, and take that stepping stone to Florida native plant society. That's kind of how I feel about that. So I see a good question to address right now from DCT123 uh, about someone looking for a, a mentor in Hillsborough County. And I would say, you know, go ahead and make a post on it in uh, the, the Native Gardening Group Facebook page saying just that, that you're looking for a mentor. Um, then again, uh, also reach out to your local FMPS chapter. Um, volunteer, I mean, depending on what you're looking for a mentor in, either volunteer at plant sales um, or go on field trips and just kind of, you know, meet people and, and start clean, clinging to those knowledgeable people to uh, learn more. That's very true. Yes, I, I like that. Um, they can, you know, even just emailing or sending a Facebook message to your local chapter, um, you can uh, get a direct connection to some of them to um, ask questions and find an expert in your area that can help you out. Yeah, I mean, I would say personally, I've found some people within the, the Couplet Fern chapter. Gia is one. Um, a couple of our members that aren't on here, um, Barbara um, Whittier, um, who's done a couple of uh, talks for us, as well as Netta Hop, Netta is Villa it Hopkins Lobos. Villa Lobos, or is mm -hmm. it just Netta Villa Lobos? Um, yeah. Another one. And then even in uh, Florida Native Gardening Group, you know, I've kind of met some people. Um, Gabriel Campbell, um, who's actually, a, I believe, a going to be a, a board member or a director at large for FMPS state level, um, mm -hmm. is doing great work on propagation of natives. Um, I probably wouldn't have met him um, so quickly if it wasn't through the, the Florida Native Gardening Group. Yeah, amazing. It's it's a great connector. Uh, you know, the, the beauty of a group like this is that you it really speeds up your connections, uh, even within your locale. And then I know Gabe is uh, out in Pensacola, so that's pretty far from Central and South Florida. So it's yeah. it's a great conduit to connect people. Yeah, like so, people. you know, I was going to say through that Facebook group, you know, I, I don't think I've ever been to Pensacola and I, I probably won't for a while get that far west. So it's a great way to uh, connect with him and learn from him, uh, you know, being so far apart. And another cool thing that I want to uh, point out about that is like, so if not for joining and, and adminning with uh, uh, Florida Native Gardening, I wouldn't ever really have any interaction or experience with uh, people's gardening and native plants in Pensacola or the Panhandle, South Florida, because right. I'm right here in Central Florida and I right. kind of stay close to where I'm at. So, um, right. You know, it's a good way to broaden your horizons a bit. You get to learn, like, I, I, I know um, what to look for if I want to ever find um, and, and photograph uh, Saracenia in the wild, or mm -hmm. um, if I want to go and see uh, uh, Pineland Rockland in South Florida before it disappears, um, I, I um, would be able to at least look at pictures and or, or look at you know, ask people, where would you go? And, and you can find out, like, you know, go and, and visit these preserves or this uh, natural trail and, and get some ideas for what you would like to see. And granted, I can't grow those things, but it's still nice to look at and, and you know, picture and then also uh, learn so that I can extend the learning to somebody else. So if somebody asks a question, say, I don't personally have experience, but I do know, like, you know, you can go to this place or something like that. Well said, well said. 
Yeah, I, I think when you learn, there's no point of learning if you can't pass that knowledge and experience on to somebody else. So that just, that made me smile. I think you just made my day. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for learning and then sharing uh, that knowledge. And Florida is so diverse, you know, most of us are in central Florida, Bonnie's up in the panhandle and she can personally attest on how diverse and different plant communities look like across the state. Bonnie, would you like to talk a little bit about your uh, field trips with your chapter? It seems like you can just go right down the road and have a field trip because it's so beautiful up there. And you can unmute yourself, Bonnie. Yep. Even an old girl can learn new tricks. Uh, I, uh, yes, yesterday we um, went to an area up here that took us 45 minutes and nothing but dirt roads to get to. Um, and it was, it, it's part of the Oscilla sink, sinks in an area and it's part of the Florida Natural, in Florida Trail. Um, and we are lucky enough to have a gentleman, Dr. Lauren Anderson, who has seven different plants named after him because he discovered them all um, as, as our group. And we went with a plant list and then Dr. Anderson and a couple of other people would stop and look at the plant. They'd tell us the species and, and that and, in background information, they tell us how it's used, uh, they tell us what its season was, and I saw trees and plants that I've never seen before. And I would never have known what they were just walking around in a mm. park or someplace because they're never named. So um, that's one of our types. Um, so McCullough County is the home seat for Saracenia, and we actually are one of, we are the most uh, biodiverse area of the state and of the eastern seaboard. Um, and we actually have done a couple of, of presentations on the variety of plants, endemic plants, found nowhere else except in North Florida. Um, we've got our fall plant, our spring plant show, has 29 different endemics that you can't find anywhere except in Wakala and Franklin counties. So Amazing. It, you learn so much from a field trip and you get to, to discuss this with people who know more and, and people who are just learning perhaps don't know as much as you do. So it's, a, it's an absolutely fantastic way to get out in nature and see things that you see all the time, but you never know what they are. So I'm highly, yeah. I'm highly recommend I think the common consensus for this live stream is you need to join the Native Plant Society so you can right. embark on field trips. <laughs> <laughs> but they're the best. <laughs> if I just could take a moment, um, on Fridays, the, we have a lunch and learn series. It yeah. started because of the pandemic. It is available to members only. Um, and you would not believe all of the topics that we have had we, uh, for the past 18, 20 months. Uh, it's always Friday from 12 to 1. It never goes over. Um, and it's just a fascinating way to focus on one aspect of a plant or, or a plant community um, and hear about it and look at it in nature. So um, it, a membership is $35 and I highly recommend it. If nothing for, but for that lunch and learn on Friday. And then we have those videos uh, accessible afterwards. Yes, Valerie Anderson has done an amazing yes. job curating some extremely niche topics. For example, blue curls. Uh, she had a, a presenter from, I believe it was University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, and he exclusively talked about the diversity of blue curls in the uh, southeastern United States. Um, 
other well-known uh, uh, people within the native plant world have contributed their time to the Lunch and Learn. So it's a fantastic series. Uh, yes, it is available to FNPS members. So in case you are a distant learner or you like to uh, just hop on uh, your phone uh, briefly during your lunch hour and watch that, it's a great way that the membership to Native Plant Society pays itself forward. Uh, with extremely uh, well-informed, educated people. So yes. Yeah, we had a whole a whole hour just on the soils of Florida. And who knew the soil could be that interesting? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is. It is. There's a there's almost a YouTube video now for any topic that you may imagine. So it's it's really cool. Um, Kaylee, if you want to briefly go through your goals here for the Native Gardening Group, and then we can start some some games uh, in the interest of time. All right. Um, so I there's a, a funny meme that I had uh, that I'd seen on I think uh, wild green memes for ecological fiends, and so I shared it to our group because I had to break our rule, and uh, I just thought it was just too funny. It's uh, Adam Sandler screaming at the wildflowers, "Are you too good for your home?" Um, cause often people find a native plant that they really like and think, oh, this is native to Florida. I'm just going to go take it home and it'll grow. And, and then they wonder, you know, what's wrong, what's wrong with my plant? So people can come to our group and they ask questions and, and uh, interact and learn. And so like our goals were to, um, make this community like this and, and we wanted to in, empower and inspire, uh, people that are new or still learning you know everybody's always still learning uh it's always something to, new to learn especially with native plants um and uh we wanted to make it more accessible you know so it's like uh, uh like we said earlier is a stepping stone to florida native plant society um and you know get people to network and share plants because there's a big space in North Florida, Northeast Florida, where there's not very many native nurseries, people have a hard time sourcing some native plants and they'll do mail order or uh, uh, purchase seeds online and then they grow the seeds, but then they need help with how to grow the seeds or when should I plant these seeds? And so it really helps with people to fill the gaps where gaps exist. Um, and we like to just share our experiences. Like people come and they will post a, a venting post about their HOA or they'll post, look at my garden. I'm finally having some success and then, you know, I'm feeling proud of myself. And so it's, it's all sorts of either good things or bad things and everything in between. And so we wanted to make it so that it was for everybody. And we, we want to try to make that uh, fair for everyone. Um, we, encourage people to try to identify and learn to identify their plants. Um, we're fine with people asking for help with IDs, but, um, you know, we want all, also want, you know, we show people the tools to use like iNaturalist or the, the ISB plant atlas or the Florida Native Plant Society plant list and the, um, what's the other one? The Florida Association of Native Nurseries. Plant Real um, you know, uh, uh, sorry, I heard an echo, it distracted me. They have um, the map where you can talk about different, or you can find your plant community, and then it'll tell you a list of what grows there. Um, so we want to try to encourage people to learn also for themselves and so that they can pass on the knowledge too. We've got people that learn something and then they go and repeat it in another group, like a, a more general kind of gardening group. They say, oh, I learned about this and this and this, and it spreads that knowledge. And so we we just want people to learn. And uh, then, you know, part of that learning is, uh, unfortunately, sometimes people learn, oh, this plant that I love is an invasive. And that, you know, really sometimes is a, a really tough thing to work over. For me, it was uh, with Mexican petunias because I love the color purple. And so I wanted Mexican petunias, but didn't. And because I found out they were invasive. And so I learned about, you know, our uh, Carolina petunia. So I, you know, really try to um, find the native alternative to the traditional plants that we have always usually known in previous gardening experiences. 
Um, and so we try to help people transition from that. And we, so we're, we're pretty, maybe a little staunch on it of keeping the invasives out of our group, but that's how we should be with our gardens too. Well said, well said. Thank you, Kaylee. All right, so it is game time. I'm all about uh, game-based learning. So uh, please participate with us in a few rounds of this fun game that we have planned for you. Uh, and you get to win an FNPS landscape for sure. So let's look at the game. The name of the game today is Comment Away. This is perfect for live streams where we get comments and uh, the, each question will have several correct answers. So just comment until you know all the answers are exhausted and we will award uh, the last few correct common answers, uh, the landscape brochure. So are you guys ready to play this with me? I'm going to shout out some clues just to, you know, encourage you all to comment. If you're viewing this on YouTube or through the uh, Native Gardening Group, please feel free to comment. Uh, there may be a slight delay, but that's quite all right because uh, if people have faster internet, it's okay, they can comment. And if yours is the very next comment after them, you're in, you're in the lead. So the last correct comment or answer wins. All right, so guys, name a Florida native plant that has weed as part of its common name. So comment away. So Kaylee, give us an example of a uh, of a common named weed that is a native plant, just to get people started. Well, the obvious would be milkweed, I guess. <laughs> milkweed, very good. All right, Kitty Rivera like wrote. Anderson, yeah. <laughs> Kitty Rivera wrote milkweed right away. All right, but what other uh, plants are there that have weed as part of its common name? Jonathan, you want to, would you like to uh, tell people? Yeah, I was going to say, I'll, uh, I'll pick one that I, I'd be surprised if somebody answered um, called Sneezeweed. It's an unfortunate name because it's not, uh, doesn't really make you sneeze, um, but it's uh, scientific <laughs> name is Helenium amarum. Mm -hmm. um, and it has a beautiful daisy like uh, yellow flower that's in the aster family. Sneezeweed. Dorothy wrote swamp milkweed. So yes, Dorothy, that's right. We have uh, Dorothy write Joe please weed. I think she means Joe pie weed. Yeah. So that's another weed, Joe pie weed. I think that's a typo. <laughs> that's a typo Chick or autocorrect. Chickweed. Yeah. Yes. Chickweed. I would not have thought of that one. Ah. Milkweed is the only one I can think of. Right. Chickweed. Well done, Kitty. Mark wrote pickerel weed. Well done, Mark. Yeah. Mark is in the lead. Now there's porter weed after that, huh? Mm -hmm. PJ. Uh -huh. weed. Porter weed. Yes, PJ. Well done. Uh oh, Mark's Mark's on it. Yeah, frost weed is not frost one I would have weed. thought of. It's a, a good frost weed. Dorothy wrote back, yes, it's a typo. She knows it's Joe Pye Weed. Okay, Dorothy, <laughs> we got you. <laughs> uh, Mark Calvinson writes, uh, frost weed. So frost weed, okay, so we have chickweed, we have Joe Pye Weed, we have swamp, me uh, we, uh, small swamp milkweed, pickerel weed. Any other uh, weeds you guys can think of? I've got another one in my head. I don't want to spoil it for anyone, though. <laughs> I've got several. <laughs> it's a tall oh, okay. purple uh, flower. Okay. Blooming. Yeah, maybe just finished blooming. Okay. Dove weed. PJ just came back with dove weed. All right, PJ, you're in the lead. And what is that one? I don't think I know dove weed. Oh, I don't know the Latin name for this one. 
but yes, it is a native plant, dubweed. Yeah. Dubweed, okay. All right, I think uh, our viewers are, are, are at a roadblock. Uh, Susan, you wanna uh, tell them uh, some of your weeds that you probably are burning to say? One of the one of my favorite flowers is the starry rosin weed. Yes, rosin weed. Well, good. well done. Fire weed. Oh, duck uh, weed. Duck weed. DCT one two three. Well done, duck weed. Okay, Jonathan, you, uh, you had a couple in mind. So the the one I was thinking of was uh, iron weed. We have. Yes. Like, three or maybe four uh, species here in Florida, mm -hmm. um, but uh, just either is just finishing up its bloom or did just finish up its bloom. It's quite tall with uh, purple mm -hmm. flowers. Mm -hmm. yep. I can see it looking out those. my window. PJ wrote ragweed, yes. The infamous <laughs> ragweed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So PJ, we're going to award you the landscape brochure. Congratulations. Congratulations. Well done and well played. Uh, Mark, just stand by. Um, and DCT123, stand by. Kitty, uh, don't worry. We have another round coming up. So uh, PJ, if you can, please uh, send us an email to coupleoffern at gmail, and we will award you a landscape brochure. Congratulations. All right. Comment away. So the last correct comment answer wins. Name a Florida native plant that has edible properties. So any part of the plant can be edible. Uh, it doesn't have to taste great. It, it just <laughs> means that you can eat it. Uh, so comment away. PJ writes, yay. Congratulations, PJ. <laughs> Comment away, name a Florida native plant that has edible properties. Edible native plants. Someone needs to think of the one that everyone always talks about. <laughs> <laughs> you mean that one purple one? Yes, <laughs> yes that's the one. <laughs> All right, I think they, oh, oh wow, we've got, Whoa. we've got a Latin name for American persimmon, Aspiros virginiana. Well done. Dor wow, the comments are pouring in, guys. <laughs> Dorothy writes, bird pepper, yes. DCT123 writes, sable palm, yes. Uh, Professor Anthrax writes, Okeechobee Tupelo, Ogeechee Tupelo, yes, absolutely right. Uh, another Facebook user writes, Meadow Garlic or Allium Canadens, yes, wild garlic. That or one was Ginny Stiebel. Oh, congrats, Ginny, yes. PJ's coming in for the kill again. Uh, <laughs> Geiger tree fruit. Well, PJ, I hate to disappoint, but Geiger tree is now described as non-native. It was introduced to Florida very, very early on. Uh, and just like Gallardia or blanket flower Gallardia pulchella, it has been, uh, you know, recategorized as a non-native. Mark Kalmanson writes frostweed. I didn't know frostweed was edible. Did you guys know that? No. Oh. Um, we have another popular ones. Yeah, we have a Facebook user from the gardening group saying, like four species of Rubus, the blackberry, three maybe. That yes. was Jeffrey. Very good. Hey, Jeffrey. Stephen, any uh, native plants that are edible come to mind to you? Yes, the bird pepper was the first one. So I got one of those a few months back. Um, and then the, the beauty berry, of course, that one is always uh, top of mind, which I think uh, someone called on the chat here as well. I want to mm -hmm. try that wild garlic, though. Mm -hmm. Yep, it, it makes a great potted plant. Uh, 
handful of vaccinians. Those are our blueberries. blueberries. Well done. Delicious. Yes, delicious. Those yeah. are native. Cleo, Cleo's uh, hopped online. She writes beauty berry. Yes. PJ writes, I need wild, wild garlic. Don't we all? It's great. A kitty writes loquat. Mm, no kitty. Try again. <laughs> uh, Chickasaw plum. Yes, Dorothy. Betney. How many of you guys have Florida betney grown in your yards? That's that's also called Florida radish. Yes, delicious. PJ writes, is there a native wild onion? Well, yes, the Allian canadense is called wild onion or wild garlic or, or uh, meadow garlic, PJ. And to answer your question about our email, that's couplet fern, like F-E-R-N, fern at gmail.com. She writes, I'm gonna look for these, what a list. Yes, that's part of game-based learning is that you discover uh, answers that you wouldn't have known. Chicks, or chinkapins, pawpaws, a simina species. Yes. All right. So uh, our Facebook user that has written pawpaws or a seminars, that's Jeffrey. He is in the lead. Uh, so I'm going to defer to Kaylee and Susan. So should we award an admin the prize? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe let's uh, ask him if he'd be in, uh, uh, if he wants it. I think he Wonder does. If he's a... I think he okay. does. And it's okay. Yeah. We have, we have so many to go, uh, uh, go around. So no, he writes, no, don't. He just enjoys uh -huh. playing it. So, but there's uh, bet me. Professor Anthrax, uh, has the latest answer. Chickasaw or chinkapin. So, <laughs> we will accept uh, Chicksaw Plum. <laughs> so uh, if you can, please email us at coupletfern at gmail.com and we'll be happy to mail you a landscape brochure. Thank you so much for coming, you guys. All right. And the last category for comment away is name a Florida native plant that is monotypic. So this appeals to some of the more science-minded people within the group. Uh, monotypic means that it is the only species found in that genus. So it's a lone representative. So name a Florida native plant that is monotypic. It also highlights the diversity and the conservation message within Florida's native plants. Now, does that mean it's the only member in the whole genus or the only Florida member in that genus? The only member in, okay. in that genus that also happens to be a Florida native plant. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for that. Thanks for that. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think I would know too many of these. That's a good question. Yeah. There's just a few. There's just a few. All right, uh, Jeffrey, this is your chance. You probably uh, can redeem yourself here by uh, answering just for fun. But uh, think about some of the asters. Think about, uh, think about, here's a great clue. What is the uh, plant that is showcased in the Florida Native Plant Society's logo? What is the plant that is showcased in the Florida Native Plant Society's logo? Dorothy writes, baby rubber plant. Dorothy, you'll have to be a little more specific. Uh, uh, if, if she means pepperonia, uh, I don't mm -hmm. think so because there's a, a few there. Maybe it's mm -hmm. another one. Oh, there's a good uh, answer from Mark Kalisman, Kalmanson. Mm -hmm. Stokesia. Stokesia. No, Mark. Unfortunately, 
we have more than one Stokesia. We have the, um, what is Stokesia Labus again, guys? <laughs> I don't remember its common the, name. The Stokes Aster. Stokes Aster, yes. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, it's it's not a monotypic plant. There is more than one uh, species within the Stokesia genus. Saranoa repens, yes. So uh, I believe the person that wrote this is Mac Camacho Rivera. Hey, Mac, congratulations. That is the right answer. So it is the only plant that is found within the genus of Saranoa. Saranoa repens, saw palmetto. And metal bull also got the right answer. So yes, uh, PJ wrote, I looked at it online. Isn't that a palm? Yes, PJ. Yes, it is a palm. Uh, but it's the only one of the Saranoa genus. Our cabbage palms are actually part of the sable genus. Sable palmetto, sable etonia. Metal Bull says I stand corrected. Well, no worries. This is all part of the fun of learning. Okay, so this one is a little bit thought provoking. It makes you think, you know, let me go through my entire library of native plants in my head and see if there was anyone that uh, stuck out as being monotypic. So your answers are Saranoa. So that is saw palmetto. Right to you. I'm going to put this in the comment box here. Saranoa, Heart Right to Garbaria, Brasenia, Pelobleffus, which is Pennyroyal. Believe it or not, Pennyroyal is a monotypic uh, plant. Vitridium, I think uh, all my space space spaces actually didn't make it into the. Uh, um, <laughs> let me add a few spaces in here. <laughs> and see if that works. That's better. Saranoa, Hartridia, Garbaria, Brasenia, which is water shield. It's an aquatic plant. Pelobleffus, Pennyroyal, and Petridium, which is bracken fern. So there you go. Um, so Jeffrey, if you would like to PM us a person that you would like to gift the landscape brochure too or if you want us to mail it to you and if you'd like to give it to somebody else uh that would be awesome thanks so much for playing guys so support couple of fern go to fnps.org slash join many of us are uh you know spaced across the state so choose a chapter local to your area uh, if you happen to be in our area we would love to have you uh, the Native Gardening Group, you can find that on facebook.com slash groups slash Florida Native Gardening. So it's a great group. And like I said, they're almost at 10,000 members. So a early congratulations. It is a uh, important milestone in the growth and a testament to your leadership and your, uh, your tutelage and the willingness of your members to share what they have learned with others. And uh, Kaylee has written this about the uh, Florida chapter sales, especially a couple of Florida Native Gardening Group are great places to find like-minded gardeners and plants. So yes, in case you are interested in embarking on that journey, uh, definitely uh, check out the gardening group on Facebook as well as a chapter within the Florida Native Plant Society. And support Native Plants. So go to fnps.org. I'm gonna pull it up right here. There's a little green button on the top right corner that says join. If you click that, it will take you to the membership. You can click on individual. There's also full-time students. So in case you have uh, students that are interested in becoming, it's just $15 for them. And students actually get to attend the virtual portion of the conference for free. So it's an uh, added incentive for our yeah, young, young and upcoming uh, members of society. So this is what the form looks like. Just fill it out and then 
Uh, you can review your contribution and then click submit. It's definitely a really, um, I mean, your membership really pays for itself. We have plant sales tangibly on the discounts that you save, like Susan had mentioned, or even through the social learning and the camaraderie that you feel within the Native Plant Society. And then don't forget to check out our Florida Native License Plate. So that's uh, another way that you can support us. Um, many people are, uh, you know, were wondering, is the can the design be updated? Yes, the design can be updated in a couple of years, but we just have to get through the 3000 mark first in order for us to talk about, uh, you know, a future redesign. So help us get through the 3000 mark. Uh, you can check this out at fmps.org slash support slash license. And then browse FMPS merchandise. So there's a, a Pine Lily t-shirts. Um, there'll be t-shirts given out for the conference as well. Conference is a great time to just, uh, you know, break bread with another native plant lover. And thank you. Thank you for hosting us, uh, Susan, Kaylee, Gia, Jeffrey. We really appreciate your time. Uh, in case you guys are more interested in uh, getting information from FNPS, the email that you can send out to admin services is info at fnps.org. We can just answer general questions. If you have specific questions about Couple Fern, uh, the North Orlando suburb region chapter, our email address is coupleoffern at gmail.com. So with that, uh, I would like to invite you all to say some parting words and um, we can conclude the web the webisode from here. Well, thanks for doing this, Mark. It was really great. And this has been one of the most interesting and most productive parts of my entire teaching career, which was 38 years long. So I love this. Yes, and let me let me thank you um, for inviting us to share some time with you. Um, I'm amazed and thrilled at, at the number of people you've been able to have to create in your group. And um, yeah, we hope there's some cross pollination going on. Um, and, and good luck to you. I, I, I will join your group this evening as soon as we make it. Thank you. And thank you for joining us, Bonnie. It was a pleasure having you on and uh, getting to virtually meet you. And uh, Mark, thank you for the idea for this. Um, it was uh, Gia back uh, in May who suggested, uh, uh, who made the post about um, getting membership going and um, getting, you know, FNPS to get some more members and have people learn from us and then from Native Plant Society. So it was, it was great to see that that came to a positive impact for both both sides yeah thanks for inviting me on to, to share i know i'm new in my plan journey but it's been great i learned a lot of stuff just in this conversation so yeah i look forward to, to more of this in the future yeah and i would say um whether it's you know through a gardening group on facebook like florida native gardening group or through in-person or virtual events with your uh, local fmps chapter um kind of learning about native plants or gardening is a lot easier uh, when you have other people to bounce ideas off of. So definitely join the, the Facebook group. And if you can join and support your local FNPS chapter. Well, thanks guys. And thank you so much for all our viewers to tune in. And um, this was wonderful. So uh, keep in touch. Um, and the people that won the, uh, the brochure, Please go ahead and uh, email us at coupleoffern at gmail or PM us if you're on Facebook um, with your uh, mailing address so we can put this out in the mail for you tomorrow. Thanks so much, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Thanks, Thanks Mike. Take care.